Hey folks, Arna here from Coding Blocks and another interesting video today about uh, interview questions that I asked. Uh, I made two such videos already about the event loop one and the recursion one. And uh, like I've said in those videos, I don't uh, often ask too many competitive uh, coding questions, even uh, too complex data structures like trees, graphs and all these kind of things. I don't ask because I never learned these and I have created a really nice career in development till now without uh, having to answer such questions on a whiteboard in an interview. Uh, but I do have a lot of questions that I ask people which take 5-10 minutes to answer if you are able to or not and it is very easy to uh, discern between uh, you know good developers or good coders and not so good uh, ones uh, right and uh, today we have one such question about javascript and this is a question that i ask to understand whether somebody has just started learning javascript or they really understand how javascript works and they have spent time understanding the principles of uh, the deeper things in javascript for example in this case we would be using something called the event loop understanding how the event loop works and how uh, you know uh, concurrency multi-threading these kind of things happen in javascript so essentially as a javascript we know it's a single threaded language but you can do things in the background on javascript i'm not going to depth of that i will be focusing on the question in hand today i'm going to just uh, make this you know uh, uh, the file I'm just calling it a.js for now so uh, it's a very uh, you know uh, interesting little question that I ask people is first I explain to them that if I do something like you know let a equal to uh, you know uh, true and then if I do uh, set timeout uh, and here in the set timeout if I uh, write that you know a equal to false right and I do that after uh, you know uh, two seconds okay so after two seconds, A will become false. Uh, then I uh, create a set interval. So a set interval, uh, so set timeout function, what it does is it runs this code after this number of milliseconds. That's what set timeout does. Uh, for a JavaScript interview, I would expect somebody to know what that means. Uh, in a set interval code, uh, you write a function that runs every X number of intervals and you write the interval. So maybe every 200 milliseconds, uh, that's 0.2 seconds, uh, we are going to do is uh, we are going to print console.log uh, hello. Okay. So that's uh, this code. Now, if I just, you know, run this code, what's going to essentially happen is that hello will get printed uh, a bunch of times. And after a certain number of times, it will get printed. Uh, how many times? Uh, you know, uh, so it'll keep on getting printed right now. So for example, sorry, uh, let me just stop the code run here. Now, uh, if I write here that, uh, you know, uh, if uh, a, uh, then we do this. Okay. Now if I write like this and if I run this code, in that case, what will happen is after uh, two seconds of uh, hello getting printed, it will not get printed any further because by that time, A would have become false. Now, the question that I ask is that, you know, if I write uh, this code here instead, that while A, uh, then, you know, uh, console.log. Um, so how many times would hello get printed or uh, for how long will hello get printed? That's the question and uh, this is obviously the trick here and uh, many people i would not say something like nine out of ten but more than five out of ten people uh, do say that a will get uh, hello will get printed for two seconds and after that hello will not be printed anymore that's what more than half of the people say and that gives me the clue that whether they really understand how event loops works uh, in depth or not i'm not going to get into the depth of event loop there are a lot of videos that even i have made on the coding blocks channel you can search for event loop or uh, you can look at the esconf 2014 video by philip roberts uh, I can put a link down in this description. This is one of the best videos for event loop. Uh, and there is a blog on Carbon5 on event loops, uh, right? So not just recommending my own videos. There are some other great content as well on event loops. But anyway, if I run this code, I'll uh, just, you know, clear the output and uh, show you if I run this code, you will see that, uh, sorry, I think I to stop the code run. And uh, if I just uh, run it again, now you see hello keeps getting, you know, printed and it keeps getting printed and getting printed after two seconds it does not stop right so uh, if you if you don't stop the code run it will keep getting you know keep, keep getting scrolled down and down and down in fact if i open it uh, in a terminal you will uh, see that uh, you know node uh, a.js as you can see it keeps getting printed it's it's keep giving scrolling down if i just pull that one up here you know the 
the line is at, at the bottom here, right? Uh, if you want a counter, maybe then that also works. So for example, instead of printing hello, if I just do uh, let C equal to zero, and then uh, if I just print uh, C plus plus, right? Um, in that case, as you can see, it keeps getting printed. The number keeps uh, increasing more and more and more, and it never stops. It will stop only if you manually stop it. And the reason for that is that uh, if our code is stuck inside a while loop, the set timeout function will not be able to be executed after two seconds. That's the explanation for that. Uh, so JavaScript is a single threaded language. The actual execution happens only on the main thread. The set timeout will wait for two seconds on a separate thread, which is enabled using Node.js or using the browser, depending on if you're running your JavaScript code on the browser or if you're running JavaScript code on the, uh, you know, Node.js, uh, the timer runs on a separate thread. But this actual function needs to be executed on the main JavaScript interpreter thread. There is only one thread that is available for your script to run on. Now, it the timer after two seconds will try to execute this code on the main thread, but the main thread is busy doing this. It cannot exit the loop because there is no exit condition for the loop. The, the exit condition is A being false, but A has not yet been set false. The code which will turn A false cannot run because the loop is continuously running on the main thread. As long as the loop runs, the code that will turn A false cannot be injected into the main thread to start. Okay, so A will never actually be turned into false. So set timeout obviously tries to run this code after two seconds, but only given that the thread is actually free two seconds later. If the thread is not free two seconds later, then this code will not run, okay. The other thing also is that the older code that I just showed before that, where I used a you know set interval. Uh, so if I use a set interval and I uh, write like this, uh, if a, uh, and then if I write uh, console dot log uh, c plus plus like I'm doing right, and uh, you know if I uh, run this every two hundred milliseconds. The interesting part here you will notice is that uh, if I just you know open the console again and I run node a dot js, is that it prints up to you know uh, it does not print actually up to nine. It does print up to eight. Sometimes it will print up to nine, and that's also a funny thing to discuss about. Will it always print up to eight? Will it always print up to nine? That's also a question I ask people when I go deep into this question. Um, you can read about why it does not exactly print nine times or eight times. Uh, but leaving aside that question you see my code execution has not stopped. My cursor is not yet free, okay? So if I press control C here, my cursor is now free, which means the program kept running because this set interval function never got cleared, okay? And I asked then people, is that what's wrong with this code? If I want to print A every 200 milliseconds for two seconds and then exit my function, what do I need to do? And this is like I, I like I said, first five people, maybe five out of 10 people already, uh, you know, uh, get removed <laughs> in, in, in just, they're not able to say that the for loop will stop, the while loop will stop. Uh, the next set of people, generally I think half of them again are not able to answer this correctly, but the correct answer to that is that you don't do it with the A false kind of system. You do it with something else. You remove the A condition. Uh, you write here set interval uh, A this thing and uh, let ID equal to, you create an interval ID and here you clear interval, the ID. So you start an interval uh, every 200 milliseconds and it's gonna print uh, the value of whatever C++. Uh, you don't need the if A block anymore in this case, right? Now, after two seconds, what I do is I clear this interval. So it will not run this code anymore and my code will become free now. Uh, I can uh, check that out. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and my code is free now, okay? Uh, my code execution actually properly stops. My cursor becomes free. Uh, the code is not continuously running uh, till now. My program actually ends running after printing a, uh, you know, uh, for every 200 milliseconds for two seconds, it has run and it's now free. So this is generally uh, takes me, what, five to 10 minutes to ask this question uh, in an interview, but it gives me, a complete understanding of whether that person really understands, uh, you know, uh, asynchronous JavaScript, understands the event loop, understands really how multi-threading works in JavaScript or not. And if I'm 
hiring for like an intern kind of position i might let this go but if for any proper engineering role for javascript on front end development if i ask this node js or front end i ask this and people are not able to clear that i don't hire them and it's a very easy question to ask uh, and a lot of people who have made uh, pretty big websites i've seen uh, on their resumes they have very nice portfolios on their own they have built and they are not able to clear this question but this is a very essential question i ask people and if you take javascript interviews yourself you can also ask this question uh, it's a very nice way to find out if people understand event loops or uh, they don't okay so we'll come back again with more such questions small tiny questions that can very easily judge people and uh, which if you are going into interviews you should know as well uh, right uh, so this is a this kind of question event loop based gets asked in a lot of other interviews uh, as well okay uh, you can obviously uh, stay subscribed to our channel uh, we would be making more such small interview based questions in the next few days uh, upcoming okay